hi there, thanks for coming. Uh, my name's Neil. Um, I'm the uh, the main technical uh, lead on the MailStore product here at uh, Zen Software. Uh, and today I'm going to uh, be showing you a bit of um, an overview of the MailStore Service Provider Edition. Um, just before I begin, uh, just uh, make sure that everyone uh, knows uh, if they do want to ask any questions, feel free to enter them in the Q&A uh, session link on the video that you're watching right now. Okay, so just before we go uh, into looking in a bit more depth in the service provider edition of Mail Store, I just wanted to start with just a quick overview of the on-premise server. I appreciate there may be some people here that haven't uh, seen the the, the on-premise solution, so I just wanted to quickly go through some of the key features. Now, now Mail Store is definitely a, an email archiving software solution, and some of the key things that it's designed to do is to really manage user mailboxes on a on, on any mail platform you may have. Uh, so we're t primarily we're talking about Microsoft Exchange servers, uh, on-site servers, but we're equally talking about cloud mail platforms, so that may be Office 365, maybe managed um, hosted Exchange server platforms. It may well be Google Mail solutions or hosted POP3 IMAP accounts, local MDemon mail servers. Um, any of our Zen Software customers should be aware of MDemon as a, a mail platform. MailStore as a product is designed to pull in email from all of these different sources, whichever solution a customer is using, um, and take uh, take that mail off the mail platform, really. So it's reducing the workload of that mail server. Um, as well as really taking a lot of the load off the server, it's providing a really compliant um, archive that allows you to very easily find and, and locate messages. Um, so if in the future users accidentally delete messages or intentionally delete messages, you've always got uh, a concise email archive that you can search through as a user as well as an admin administrator and get access to um, all communication with a particular email address. Um, Another key sort of feature of MailStore is the ability to protect against potential data loss. So don't think of it necessarily as a backup solution, but definitely uh, as users potentially do lose email now and again and they want to find email, knowing that you've got this uh, a, a extra archive that's there all the time that you can, as a user, quickly search through and find all communication and then restore back to your own mailbox, if you like or just deal with a lot of times people opening up messages in MailStore uh, and just replying to them. MailStore has this built-in Outlook add-in, which is the primary way users connect, so they can very easily respond to emails. Um, and really, the sort of one of the main benefits is to get rid of all of those local PST file archives that users tend to keep. Um, so by bringing all of your archives into one place, you can really... Um, slim down what's in the mail server and get rid of all these archives and have one compliant central archive. Well, think of that mail storage server is very much an on-premise solution. It's designed to be installed on the site where customers generally are working from. The service provider edition is, is very different. I mean, this has really been designed to allow for... Uh, resellers or, or service provi service solution providers to provide a centralized email archiving platform. Uh, so this is still a, a Windows-based software solution. It still revolves around building a Windows platform, um, but you're creating an email archiving as a service type solution. Um, so you can offer the same functionality that you would if you were providing on-premise on server solutions, but all within a, um, a cloud environment, on, on a hosted environment, I should say. It's ideally suited um, for those resellers where you want to create one platform to host multiple customer instances. So by that I mean um, where you, you have a, a hosted solution, a hosted server solution, you have multiple customers you want to service, but it's not ideal for you uh, to to provide individual local servers. We are finding that a lot of small businesses now are now looking for a hosted uh, product that's exactly the same as what MailStore Server would do, but um, it's all centrally managed by uh, a service provider. It can be run on your, your own uh, infrastructure if you have already got hosted services uh, in your company, uh, or if you're looking to host it on a, a leased infrastructure. Um, it's really, 
designed to work with any email platform exactly the same way as the MailStore server product can connect out and pull in email from other uh, mail solutions the service provider edition is exactly the same you don't you don't have to think about it only running alongside a particular hosted mail platform it will work quite well in that environment but if you've got some customers that need to pull in uh, email from their local exchange server other customers that may want to be pulling it in from a Google mail platform others from MD and it doesn't matter you can mix and match these customer instances uh, to, to 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 archive to one central solution each customer instance is kept very separate and securely separated but uh, as a provider you are looking after one platform uh, and it's designed really from the outset to be able to scale to any number of customers and users. Um, I'll talk today about a very sort of uh, straightforward solution um, um, and in a few more slides I'll talk about the differences between a single server platform and a multiple server platform but the nice thing about MailStore uh, SPE is that you can start in a small server and then grow it over time to potentially add more and more customers to it. So who is it aimed at? Um, well really we're looking at any customer or I should say any service provider that has their own leased Windows ho hosted infrastructure um, we're not really looking at uh, hosted service providers like uh, you know people who are hosting on uh, Windows Azure or Amazon uh, S3 cloud it's really when you have your own dedicated server platform it may be you've already got an existing portfolio of hosted services so if you're already hosting uh, exchange hosted exchange mail platform um, or if you've got you know you're, you're reselling a, an office 365 solution where you've already got these customers that have got hosted mail platform but they're looking for uh, additional add-on products like archiving then obviously this is a great fit it's designed to serve several customers from one shared hosted platform so it's really much more a cost-effective way of utilizing hardware I mean obviously there's a storage requirement and we'll talk a little bit later on about that um, and that needs to grow with a number of customers but the uh, the underlying hardware is shared across multiple service, uh, customers those uh, those of you guys that are actually IT support companies that are maybe looking for your first product to get into the service provider market again it's a really nice easy product to work with it's it's based on Windows Server platform uh, so it's something if you're all very familiar with already um, it, it's 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 nice and easy to set up on a single server platform and really we're looking at an entry point of about 100 users so and that's not 100 customers that's 100 users across a few customers be, be, below that is probably not going to be cost effective but uh, if you, you know if you're thinking within the first few months well yes there's you know, I've got 10 customers here and they total 150 users then that's you know an ideal sort of size to start so what sort of benefits does it provide to the uh, to the end users Oh, so I've just got a question coming here. Could I move our on-premise mail store to our data center with this edition? Uh, yes, you can. I will actually cover that a little bit later on in the demonstration. So I'll, I will come back to that one, Mandy. No problem. Um, so yes, yeah, so I was just saying for, for business benefit, you can offer archive for all mail platforms. So yes, definitely all the uh, hosted platforms and on-premise. So don't forget that the, there is an option here where you can potentially pull email out of the customer's on-premise servers and store it centrally. So there's kind of a bit of a crossover there. Uh, whereas MailStore Server was very much designed to sort of pull from local mail platforms and maybe from the cloud, this is the, the reverse. It's very much a very good recurring revenue stream. I mean, once you've got users into this platform, uh, it's, it, you know, it's built on a monthly cost model, then you know you've got this ongoing revenue from the customers and it's and it's something that's quite sticky as a service um, and, and it allows you as a provider to to you know satisfy this need for cloud services it's a really good entry point for for starting to provide cloud services there's definitely a cross-selling element here for existing services if you if you know if you're looking to sell uh, mailboxes per month then uh, it's very easy to just add on an archiving solution there as well one thing I should mention here, from from a user's point of view, uh, you know, you can start as low as uh, as five accounts under an instance. So it is cost effective for those very small customers with only a handful of users. 
uh, and, and there's always a 30-day trial period where there's no cost to you, um, which you can easily pass on to your customers as well. Um, so, you know, they, you can get them set up very quickly. Uh, I'll show you how you do that sh uh, shortly. Um, and, and they can see it from themselves for 30 days. Generally speaking, when we're trialing, we don't tend to delete email from the, the mail platform that we're archiving. Um, you can always turn that option on later, but it's a really good way of getting users to be able to see exactly what the, the service would provide. So I just want to just quickly show you the actual architecture of the product. So if you if you're familiar with the Mailstore server program, um, then the, there are some differences here that I want to uh, explain. Uh, so to start with, I've, I've kind of already touched on this, but there's a single or multi-server platform. So what I'm saying here is if you really want to start quite small and you want to keep things simple, you can do everything on one physical window server. But obviously that's got a scalability issue if you if you grow to the point that, not just from a storage point of view, but if you think about the, you know, the, the, the processor power, the memory requirements uh, of, of that server, there's a point at which it, you, know, you want to grow beyond that. Um, and the nice thing about MailStore SPE is it definitely allows you to very easily um, grow into multiple servers. And if you need so you can even migrate instances across those servers. Each customer has a separate archiving instance uh, created for them, and they're kept very separate. There's no uh, ability from the customer's point of view to be even aware that they're sharing a platform. As far as they're concerned, it's a dedicated server solution. Um, from an administrator's point of view, then yes, you can see these different instances and you can store their instances in different storage um, areas. In the simplest form, and I'll keep things simple today, those storage areas are generally just directories on the, uh, the mail store platform, uh, but in a, in a more um, evolved solution, then you could very easily have dedicated storage um, hardware if required per customer. So you can build very segregated solutions that are securely kept from other customers. It's certainly not one mail store server with all of the customers added to, which I know uh, initially if some people thought, well, that's too insecure. No, it's definitely not that. You can also delegate the uh, the management of the, the mail store service, uh, the interface that you are familiar with with mail store, down to the customer if required. So you have the choice uh, as a, a service provider, you can do this yourselves, or you can say, well, actually, I'm going to build this mail store platform, um, I'll configure it for you, and then it's the customer's responsibility to, to take over. Um, but that's totally up to you as a service provider to, to choose how much you want to give to your customers. The actual management of the, the solution, the creating of these customer instances, uh, storage space requirements, managing that, that's all done through a web interface. Uh, so once you've actually installed the solution, it's very quick and easy to, to, to move to manage remotely. Uh, so you know, really what I'm trying to point out here is it's really easy to start small and grow it as required. Um, another key feature here that's very different to MailStore Server is this ability to do continuous archiving. With MailStore um, Server, you would set up archiving tasks and then you give them a schedule when that task runs. Uh, and this works well on a, on a single server platform for a local user, but when you've got many instances all running together, many customers sharing that hardware, trying to sort of manage schedules and they don't overlap too much to share that loadout wasn't really a, a way forward. So instead, all of the archiving jobs are, are kind of treated like a, a sort of trickling of, of archiving. So all day long, they're automatically managing all these different jobs. So the, the load on the network, and more importantly, the load on the customer servers is, is, is trickled throughout the day. That's quite a different way of looking at MailStore, but from all our experiments, um, it's a much better way of doing things because you really don't notice big spikes in network traffic uh, and, and likewise you know the actual mail from users mailboxes is growing throughout the day rather than this once a day update uh, model. So let's just have a quick look at the single server operation. The, the main thing to sort of take from this diagram is that the, the mail store SB edition is uh, is split up into di three different components. There's a management server component, which is obviously used for uh, you as the system um, administrator to manage the solution. So that has its own web-based uh, management port uh, and, and firewall requirements to get access to it. So, you know, generally speaking, that would only be accessible by yourselves, not by customers. 
Then there's the instant server, and the instant server is where this is all just a service within Windows. This is all on one server, I should point out. The instant server is where you create customer instances, and each customer instance is dedicated to that customer. There's no crossover there. Customer A connects to their instance and is totally unaware of customer B's instance. Um, there's also a third component which uh, is kind of part of this solution which is the customer interface so when customers connect in so when they connect to see their archive uh, they're connecting to a, a customer service um, and, and that that customer server allows you to to open up uh, you know connection for Outlook access as well as web access um, but again that it can grow you'll see on the next diagram when I talk about multiple servers how that can be that load can be spread the key thing about the, the single server is it's something you can set up very quickly indeed uh, and get running and then you can you know grow it as required. So if we are the, uh, the multiple server solution, there we go. Um, this is a, a two server platform where our primary server, server one, is our management server and only one of these servers needs the management server installed. That's where we take control. Server two effectively is 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 told to conf to uh, communicate with server one. So in essence, we manage server one and we see all of the instances across server one and server two. So here we've got a scenario where we've got three larger customers. Uh, let's say that you know we've got server hardware where we want to share the load out. Customer A is connecting through the client access server of, of server one to their instance, whereas customer B, actually the client access server for them is on server two. So we're sharing the load. Maybe these customers have uh, less users but a larger archive and that that's why we have instances on server one so really what I'm trying to show here is that instances can exist on a server um, and they can be accessed through the client access server from either server but the key thing is this is all very easy to 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 move around in the future if you feel that you want to share the load in a different way or you maybe a, a user grows to a certain size and you feel that you know they now need to uh, their client access requirements would be better suited on a different platform but we can grow to this as we as we build the solution oops lost my mouse now so at this point, I, I want to sort of uh, go through a little bit of demonstration um, of the actual procedure of uh, using Mail Store SPE. Uh, so if I just uh, oops, I've gone too far ahead, if I just quickly switch to a, a remote session, what I've actually got running here is is two uh, virtual machines running Windows Server 2012. Uh, we're actually running it in uh, the core server environment, uh, so it's a very basic in, uh, interface. So really, what I just wanted to show is all that is running on the server, uh, and and what I'm running here is the actual. I've gone through the installation. I won't go through a full installation now because it'll take a little bit of time. Um, but I've run up the Mail Store um, Provider Edition configuration window, and this is where you configure those different services. So this first server, if it was a single server solution, this is what you would see. You've got your, your management service, uh, an instant host for, for the actual instances to run under, and then a client access server. On my second server, oops, I need to minimize that. On my second server, uh, which is over here, I don't need the management service. In fact, there you can see above there, there's the actual installer that I've left open. Uh, I just have the instant host for storing customer instances and the client access server. So I've effectively built that diagram I just showed you with the multiple server solution. If we now switch to the actual um, to my web browser, I'm going to show you what you would see as a management uh, interface. Uh, so, if you want to manage this solution, um, you, you would log in over HTTPS. The the fully qualified domain name of the server. I'm obviously I'm using an internal server here, uh, and and the management port is 8470. Here's your login page. Let's let's log in as the main admin account. And this is the main interface, so it, it's drawn it there. So the first thing you see is the, is the main dashboard, and this is really good to get a, a good visualization of what we've built. This is a two-server solution, um, and, and I've named them Zen Mail Store 1 and Zen Mail Store 2. So you can see at the top half here, I have one management server, which is managing both one instant server on Mail Store 1 and one instant server on uh, sorry, a one instance server on Mail Store 2, and also a client access server on Mail Store 1 and a client access server on Mail Store 2. So the instances here, um, I can just add as many as I need. So as a, as a system grows, I just add more and more servers and, and grow it this way. I still connect through one management server. 
if we actually have a look at our instances, um, here's a list of uh, sort of demo customers that I've created. Um, and you can see that each customer has to have a unique ID. Uh, from experience, it's, it seems to be a good idea to give them, you know, a, a, an ID rather than a, a customer name at that point, just so you've got a bit more flexibility should you end up with two customers with the same name in the future. That's the unique identifier, so it really needs to be different. Um, but the actual, uh, the URL that these customers will use to get access to it is based on the URL alias. So you can, really, customers don't need to worry too much about which customer they are, but they, they do, you know, need to know uh, the alias. But we'll come back to that a little bit later on when I show you how they connect in. So probably the, the best thing to do here is to, is to go through the process of adding a new customer. Uh, so if we create an instance, let's let's give it an instance ID. So I'm going to pick the next one. Oh, we got customer 10. Now I want to give it a URL alias. So we need to you know think of a, an alias that's relative to this this customer. So we'll we'll, we'll call it just Neil Neil and Co. Uh, the display name is a is a an understandable name for the customer, and then we choose which instance host we want to host this customer's uh, archive. Uh, so obviously, over time, you may feel that well, actually, you know, I want to know uh, Mailstore one's filling up a bit, and I want to share the load and put it on Mailstore two. I want to start it automatically uh, as soon as I've created this instance. Uh, and this is where I did now decide where do I want to store the archive. So if you're used to mail store server, um, you'll probably use the idea of having a, a mail archive folder and all of the archives exist under that folder. Well, in essence, it's a similar thing with, with mail store SPE, but you can choose the path for each instance. Now, this is now looking at the, by default, the drives available to the mail store 2 server. Now, it's a very simple setup. I've kept things really simple. So I've only got a C drive here. Um, and all of my archives uh, exist under the mail store instance folder. But obviously this can be any drive letter that's valid from this server. So it could be local storage, it could be shared SAN storage, uh, you know, it could be extra internal storage per customer. It's totally up to you how you design this, um, but in essence you just need to define a path. Uh, so I'm going to say, I'm going to put this uh, into the mail store instance folder, but I want to create a, a new folder for customer 10. So there we go. So we're going to put the whole, this customer's archive under customer 10. Uh, a couple of little things in advanced configuration. Um, you can enable debug logging from here to get more finer information. And also, I won't really touch on this in this webinar, but if you need to do any backups of the whole solution, uh, you can decide whether you want to enable the VSS writer for each instance tend to, to leave that option on. So we'll just leave it for about 30 seconds or so and it should now effectively create this instance and this is exactly the same as installing a full copy of Mailstore server uh, on this server but only designed for this particular one customer. Uh, so it's a good time if there are any questions um, to, to ask them now and uh, I can come to them. Uh, I, I'm still aware, Mandeep, that you were asking about the uh, moving on-premise. I'll do touch that a little bit later on. Okay, so it's, it's actually finished. It's a little bit quicker than I expected. So the, the first thing it's going to tell me here is it's going to give me the, the password for the for the mail store admin user for this customer. Now, you could take that and just give that to the customer and say, okay, here's your login details. To be honest, it's not that important that you remember it these details at this stage, and I'll show you why in a moment. Uh, you can easily go in and, and create or recreate this password at any time. So we'll just go past there. So you can see that I've created that instance, uh, but I haven't yet decided to to start it. Um, so the, all the others are running. So we'll, we'll we'll start that instance and get it running in the background. So there, you can. This is quite useful as well. If you if you if you're running um, SPE on a on a Windows full Windows server, you can actually look at the process. You can match the process ID here with the Windows process ID for that instance. It, it is the virtual little mail store servers running within the same Windows platform. So if we double click on that instance now, now we can see all the details for this particular customer. I'll just move things up a little bit so you can see that a bit better. And we can see this. There's nothing really stored here at the moment. We've got two megabytes worth of database, a megabytes worth of content, and the index files are a total of megabytes. It's tiny because we haven't set anything up. 
here's our archive stores and this is what is quite different users or I should say customers don't really ever see their archive stores because they've got no concept of the underlying file structure as far as they're concerned they have one big archive and it's up to you uh, as the system administrator to maintain the the customers archive stores now if you're used to mail store you'd be probably used to the auto create feature which is designed to automatically create a new uh, archive store every by default 500,000 messages and that's probably the perfect option to leave on it will just cre recreate them automatically based on the date that it creates it in the customers folder so this this folder that I created is dedicated to this customer and that makes perfect sense so out of the box you don't really need to worry about creating archive stores Mandy you mentioned you want to know how to uh, bring in other uh, archives from other locations well this is exactly where you do that if you wanted to you could at this point you could attach a store um, we can you know we can give it a name old store we can decide whether we want to archive new messages here or not probably not you tend to you know when you bring in old stores you you don't want to archive to them you just want to bring them in as, as effectively read-only stores um, and then we can select the folder so from a Windows Server point of view as long as you've copied that data into a, an accessible folder it may, may make most sense to store that under the same um, uh, instance folder for that customer so you keep things logically uh, together um, but I actually have um, an old archive store here under email archiver mail archive there's an old default file group that I pulled in before uh, so if we select that and click OK I should now mount that uh, existing mail store uh, archive that I'd, I actually created with mail store server on-premise solution and you can see that it, it's not a particularly large one but it contains 500 messages and it totals 10 megabytes so it is very easy to migrate existing customers I think the best process is like what we're doing here you set up a new one get everything up and running and then bring in the old data um, but it's up to you how you tackle that process the actual accessing of the uh, the archive um, from here on we we as a as a, a management uh, admin effectively have to be given permission to open mail store um, so that's one of the things that uh, you have to do initially you, have to, you effectively have to say yes I'm happy that um, uh, the mail store service provider you as the service provider is now able to look at the the customer uh, archives that may be contained within this instance this is logged to the as well so that's important because you know anytime anybody gets access to this data it needs to be recorded um, so that, that's why that option is there you'll notice at the bottom that to access the archive you have to download the mail store client now this is a specific version for uh, the mail store SPE um, you know you do download this separately download it, install it but it acts just exactly the same as the uh, the mail store um, on-premise client there's also uh, the mail store outlook add-in can be downloaded from here these are these are MSI files so once you've got a copy you can make these available to your customers through other methods if you want um, I've already downloaded the client so I'll just click on open mail client to actually allow it to connect through to this customer instance uh, and let us actually have a look at what's running within uh, this mail store instance okay so it's it's effectively saying uh, I want to run up the mail store client and I want to connect to HTTPS colon slash slash so a HTTPS um, secured session the name of this server now I'm doing everything internally here but this would normally be a fully qualified public name of, of your server that you can make available to customers and then the customer ID uh, so this is the URL that you can give to customers to say well when you want to manage mail store you connect to this server they'll connect as a different admin we're, we're connecting through as a service provider management user this dollar archive admin which is like a special account but they could connect with whatever accounts you create in mail store which I'll show you in a moment so all we have to do here is just click yes because we're happy that we're passing those parameters through to the email archive client but this, bear in mind, this can be done from any machine now. We don't have, we're not running on the Windows Server, we're running Mail Store SP. I'm running this effectively, you know, completely remotely.
Okay, didn't pop up in front there. That threw me for a second, but uh, there we go. Um, that's the actual MailStore client interface. You can see that it, it's uh, brandable as well. I mean, the default logo is obviously that generic service provider archive, but you can brand that um, however you want. Um, it's, it, they designed it to try and keep it as non mail store um, branded as possible so it's a, it's a sort of blank solution but if anybody who's used to using mail store will recognize this interface um, here's our abilities to create archive jobs it's very similar to before slightly different interface you pull down to decide what you want to archive I won't go through a full install now it takes some time but uh, if you're interested in know more about how you actually archive different mail platforms um, there are other webinars that I, I run through that um, so please feel free to uh, to sign up to one of those um, obviously we can email we can archive email servers we can archive email uh, clients or we can pull in archives from other um, file sources like PST or email, MSG files, etc. The difference really when you're creating these jobs is that there's no concept of any um, schedule. If you're used to MailStore, you think, oh, there's no schedule option where, where these jobs will just run automatically in the background all day long. Users uh, and management, a few little things that are slightly different here. This is where we create users. Now, we can either create the users manually. Um, uh, to to you know if you've got a handful of users and you don't want to synchronize them with any service particularly you can you can create them manually here uh, and that's probably how most of these installations are going to run unless you've got tens and hundreds of users then it makes sense just to create them manually if you need to you can synchronize them with an active directory ldap server so if you if the customer has a, an ldap server or, or active directory server you want to make available it's kind of taken that you as a service provider will find the network's um, firewall requirements or VPNs uh, to provide that, so you have to bear that in mind. Um, um, but there also is interface here to go to a generic LDAP server, or there's this, I won't go into detail, it's quite complex, but there is this application integration search for service. Now, for those of you that are used to dealing with uh, our daemon mail server platform, uh, this is something that's being worked on right now, um, due to be released shortly, uh, that allows you to synchronize users with an mdaemon user base over uh, just a web connection uh, and this works quite well so you know you see the idea being that if you've got a hundred users on an on-site mdaemon platform uh, and you want to keep the users and passwords synchronized with this mail store platform it's very easy to do through one URL pull there's obviously verification going on here um, but that's what that features there for I think most customers with um, with on-site or, or hosted exchange platforms will, will be using a, a form of LDAP verification but that should give you a sort of, I, I, like I say, I, can't, I won't really go through all the sort of functions of MailSoft, but hopefully what you can see here is that um, you know, from, a, from a, a customer point of view, you have your own MailStore platform. I, I, there's no concept you can see of, um, uh, of storage. That's all done uh, in the background through the management console. Uh, Mandeep's got a, another question. Uh, can you change the customer number on the URL to the customer name? You can make it whatever you want. I, I, I kind of, when I first uh, test platform, I thought, well, I need an instance ID that's unique for each customer. And I thought it made sense to be called customer and then a number. But when you create an instance, it's totally up to you what you're using there. As long as it's you know standard characters A to Z, not to nine, and a dash symbol, then um, it's allowed. So yes, you could use customer names if you prefer. The, I guess, you know, it, it's probably is thinking about it, probably quite rare to have two customers with the same name, but that's why I went down that path, but you're certainly not required to. Uh, okay, um, last couple of things that I, I wanted to show you before we, we wrap up for questions and answers. Um, how do customers log in, actually end users, I should say, of the solution? Well, it's a similar thing. Um, bear in mind that we have this URL that's valid. We have users and passwords. So if I, if I switch to Outlook now, uh, if Outlook will come up for me. There we go. Ooh, I wasn't patient enough. There we go. When you install the, the Mail Store Outlook add-in uh, and configure, in fact, what I'll do here is I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll clear the cache credentials so we, we have to browse again. This is effectively what the users have to put in. It, it, they're connecting to a server name, which is HTTPS colon slash slash. The, the fully qualified domain that you've created for your um, SPE server, 
um, the management server effectively that you're connecting to, and then and then the like you say the 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 unique identifier in this case customer hyphen nine, but that could be if you've created the customer name. And logging in with a standard user and verification detail. So I think if I log in as myself here, this this customer nine is actually a, a test uh, platform for um, one of the, I think it's the email archiver customer. Now there's my archive. Now you notice there's nothing really in that archive at the moment. Uh, that's because uh, I actually added that um, existing archive to the new created customer rather than customer nine because I, I was answering Mandeep's question rather than following my standard procedure so let me just uh, let me do that now so imagine that I'm customer nine and I want to add that additional archive store so I'm going to attach uh, let's call this old store and I'm going to attach that existing store that I'd uh, copied onto here it's actually for this customer you see there we go. Oh, there you go. It's, it's always, always the case when you do things slightly different. Of course, I've already added it to this other customer, so I can't add the same store to two different customers at once. So I have to detach it from this store first. Uh, so I think if I do uh, store commands, you see I can easily detach them as well as attach them. And I switch back to this customer, archive stores, and then let's. Uh, I think we probably will have to detach and reattach it. So okay, attach, call it old store. Here we go, there's our old store that we've imported and it's attached. Okay, so if I now whoops, switch back to Outlook. Now you can see, because I've attached that old store, I've effectively very quickly imported a lots of old archives. So immediately I've got an old archive that I can see and access. Uh, there's not much in this archive, but there you go. There's some, some emails. So as a user, it feels and works in exactly the same way as the normal mail store, as a local mail store platform. But in reality, I'm, I'm, I'm connected to that virtual instance on, on mail store SPE. So just to sort of um, look in a little bit more detail at things like the hardware requirements, this is obviously one of the first things to think about. It is designed to be built around dedicated server hardware, so it's not ideal to be running this on um, hosted virtual providers like when Microsoft Azure or, or Amazon Cloud, Amazon S3, mainly because the, the disk throughput is, is variable on those platforms. We, we started looking at this initially and and, uh, uh, and so did MailStore themselves that um, yes you can build it, it'll run quite happily but it, it, you, you're never guaranteed that, that throughput so one minute you can find that your, your archives are, are responding very quickly and the next minute it, it can be very available. It's totally down to the cloud provider. Now that's not to say that every virtual provider will be the same and you may well have a really good relationship with a, another virtual hosted provider that guarantees disk throughput. If that's the case, absolutely great. Feel free to, to, to build a SPE on that type of platform. But generally speaking, you need to have that assurance of what throughput have I got for my disks because um, disks are, are very important to how quickly you're going to archive new data but more importantly get access to that old data. Windows Server 2012 Core is an ideal platform. You certainly don't need a full OS, as you can see. Once you've actually run through the installer, which is you know very straightforward, and you signed where you you're you're storing different components, like your instances, do, do you want them on a separate drive or not? You don't really ever need to go into the the actual Windows OS at all. You can do everything through the through the management interface. So personally, I, I've I've found using 2012 Core ideal. If you want to run 2012 full server platform, fine. I wouldn't probably go on an older OS now. It doesn't doesn't seem to make sense. But there's no reason why you couldn't run it on on 2008 if you wanted to. Um, from a CPU point of view, well, generally speaking, you know, a modern quad-core CPU would be more than up to the job. It's not a very CPU-intensive task. Obviously, if you load up a server with 100 instances with a very large uh, set of uh, storage backend, then you may have to reconsider this. Um, but generally speaking, for the sort of 
a number of customers we'd expect to be running on this sort of platform, you know, a, a modern entry level hosted server would be ideal. Memory is a little bit more interesting. Memory, there is actually a calculation that I've put up here just to give you an idea of, of how much memory you would need based on the number of instances and the number of users those instances have. Um, it's kind of self-explanatory really. If you want to put 10 customers on a server, um, each one of those customers you need to reserve a quarter of a gig of RAM just for the fact that they, they exist and then about 5 megabytes per user plus an overhead of 10% and an additional gig. It's, it's one of those, uh, throw it all in a basket and there's your answer. Um, Yes, that seems to work quite well. Generally speaking, you know, unless you're running hundreds and hundreds of, of instances, you know, RAM's a cheap element, but uh, you may be looking at 16, 32, you know, that, that sort of, uh, that many gigabytes uh, for a typical server. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and I've already kind of touched on the, the, the fact that really the faster the storage, the better. So whereas you may want to be testing this with local... Uh, internal single SATA drives, that's probably fine for a testing environment. In a real world scenario, you know, you really want to be thinking about a, a dedicated hardware RAID per server, uh, per instance server. Um, having said that, you know, other people are looking at shared, really fast uh, disk uh, SAS devices, SAS based, sorry, SAN devices, um, uh, and that may be well another way to go if you've got, uh, you know, the, if you're thinking of scaling this up to many more servers in the future. It's really open to interpretation here. It's down to, you know, how much load you expect, but really, so you should be thinking of hardware for minimum, you know, a, a rated uh, solution. So it kind of wraps up um, this webinar. I mean, I'm more than happy to to take any more questions you have now. I appreciate it. it's it's a very sort of quick overview. It's really just a taster of the product, so to generate you know a bit more interest and see what uh, what ideas people have for for using the product. But I'm happy to to hang around now for a little bit longer if if there are any questions at all. Um, other than that, I hope I hope it's been very useful. <laughs>